it has its ups and downs. Um, I think so far it's like singing. Um, it's like giving your best 15 seconds. <laughs> Or like we're doing so much production for 15 seconds. Um, and like I, I, I would say for me, because there's been like um, a studying background, you know, like in undergrad, we practice 15, 20 hours a week. So we we know like what the voice can do <laughs> or you, you're able to you know, pace yourself. Hey, welcome to this episode 21 of Monique on the Mic. I'm Monique B. Thomas, and I am super excited for today's guest. And I know that I say that every single week, but I am excited because of the stories we get to hear. Today's guest is a ray of light. She's a beautiful human, um, incredible voice, incredible artist, and an America's Got Talent finalist. Uh, I can't wait for you to hear what she has to say about the music industry and what it means to be in this business. Take a listen. I want to welcome to the show Lashane Boyd. How are you? I am doing so well. And thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm I'm super excited. Oh man, you're not more excited than I am because I have been sort of fanning out on you on Instagram for a while now. Yeah, I have. You know, a friend of mine who is a fellow, a good friend and a fellow teacher, uh, Alita Nikiariko, um, we came up together. Uh, through SLS, and um, she told me about you. She's like, "Oh, you, you should, you should check her out." I said, "Well, let me go check her out on Instagram." And I checked you out. I'm like, "Oh, I, it's just there's something about you that makes me feel like I kind of know you, or well, at least I wanted to know you because you, you've got this very, this light spirit that I, I'm very drawn to people who bring light to the world." And and you've always you've got this infectious smile and of course the most beautiful voice and what you do with it. And you just you just seem so friendly and like, let me see if I ask her to be on my little show, will she be on my show? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You, you know, this is this is that's so cool because I remember her posting a clip. Uh, I believe you guys had, had did a podcast together. And I just remember mm-hmm. um, her podcast. Her, yeah, okay, okay. And I, I just remember like you speaking and I was like, oh, wow, like this is a very passionate woman. And I was like, I just love the the, the passion that you're mm. bringing. So I'm, I'm, I'm so glad we got the chance to connect. Oh, see, you know what? I think it's important as artists that we shoot our shot. You know what I mean? Um, and so when I was like, OK, you know, I've written we've kind of commented on different things back and forth. And I was like, let me shoot my shot. But talking about shooting shots. Let us talk about your time at America's Got Talent because that's a big shot to shoot. Can we talk about that? Yes. So yes, in, please, let's do it. <laughs> in 2023, you were on America's Got Talent. Can we talk about how you got the idea to do it, the courage, whatever, how to have that all start? Yes. So I, I have heard about America's Got Talent and, you know, like all the singing shows. Um, and um, so... So the so there was an opportunity to audition out in California, and I was like, okay, I'm I'm going to do it. And um, but what really attracted me to like auditioning for the show was like you get to like tell your story and mm-hmm. um kind of share like how you've what's your journey been like and why are you here today, um, <laughs> and. Right. And and you know this could go wrong for a lot of people, and it can go really, really right. Um, mm. But I was planning for it to go really, really right for me. And um, I um, one thing I, I've learned just from like being on social media and um, connecting with people is like storytelling is huge. Mm-hmm. And when when you find a way to tell it where other people can see themselves and connect with it, that's mm-hmm. very, um, that leaves any, an, well, it's it's a long lasting effect on people. Absolutely. Uh, what leaves a long lasting effect. Yeah. Yeah. You're and, so right. Yes. And it's, it, and like, it's, it's part of, again, like being on social media, community building. Um, a lot of people kind of gather around this, this shared story. And, mm-hmm. and so when, Going out to AGT, I was like, all right, I, I get to sing, and I also get to share my story. Mm-hmm. And um, 
And that was what I was the most excited about. And the audition process was was really good. It was also really long as well. Yeah. <laughs> and so that was the first experience of like working, I guess you would say like show business and mm-hmm. seeing all the cameras and the moving parts of what's what happens on shows like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it it was it was uh, such an amazing experience, and when I got the opportunity to audition, I definitely took it and tried to run, try to run with it. Right, and ran you did because let me tell you something. I typically don't watch a lot of those shows. Um, just I honestly do, I don't have a lot of time, and I'm not always that interested. I'll just I'm, I like to keep stuff real. Um, I, you know, people will come up and be like, "Wow, you got to see that," or whatever. I saw yours, and I kid you not. I was choked up. I was, <laughs> I was, I needed tissues because it was so, your story was touching and your story set up your voice and you prepared us to hear you. And well, we weren't prepared because <laughs> it. I think, and I think in, in the room, I think everybody was kind of like crying. And I think at one point, did you have a tear? It was just so touching. Yes. <laughs> it was so, so, so touching. And you got, you got four yeses, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Hello. Yes. Cue the clapping. Right. <laughs> but like you said, it, that connection, you know, what hit me, what hit me is as an artist, you were gentle with yourself and you gave yourself permission to do the thing that you coach everybody else to do. And I know how hard that is as a coach, you know, to practicing what you preach. You're, as you say, you know, at the end of the day, we are as singers are on the opposite side of the piano. So we know what that means. And so I appreciated seeing this woman give herself permission with, with love and support. I, I could see you saying, oh, come on, baby, you can do this. You got this. You know, kind of coaching yourself. <laughs> That's what I really loved. I mean, I, obviously, I loved the singing, but it was that permission that I think that we're so hard on ourselves with, you know? Um, so I thought that was amazing. I thought that was absolutely amazing. Now, how, let's talk about the things that you've learned from that experience of being on the show. Yes. So it's, You've you've already touched base on one of the the biggest things, which is giving yourself the permission. Um, it's because like coming from an academic environment um, and trying to figure out how do you have a career of <clears throat> how do you have a music career, how do you have a career mm-hmm. um, where you can sustain yourself and you believe in and you mm-hmm. feel like it's. Um, it's something like when you lay your head down at night, like it's something you're proud of, you're very much proud of. Yeah. Which is, it's, it's <laughs> like, that's a very important thing. Um, and part of the first step is giving yourself permission mm-hmm. um, and showing up and knowing what you believe in, or at least being able to figure out what, what it is that you believe in. Mm-hmm. Um, because that, that I, that's a thing too is like I, I think I stand for all these things until I get in that room and I'm like oh you know the, <laughs> the anxiety know. of this is kind of pushing me yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> but but um so post AGT was like giving yourself that permission and um that's where I feel like you're whoever your audience is or whoever that community whatever that community is that you build for yourself that's the foundation mm-hmm. of it um and you and you learn how to step out more and i would say be authentic um mm-hmm. with that and and people they sense it they pick up on it mm-hmm. and um and so post agt has just been a lot of a, a lot of that for myself as a, as a as a person mm-hmm. um and then also for so far as like coaching other singers like now i've seen that pattern for myself mm-hmm. like i'm like all right this is a pattern to consider mm-hmm. um what if what what is it like if I sing this piece and I'm not thinking about all the ways the the singers on who on TikTok or whoever have sung this? Right. Like what if I I step to this piece and trust the story tell the story that I'm piecing together or the perspective that I bring and um 
and like mm. and you can say like hey it's not going to fail you um i think you're going to be proud of doing that at the at the end of it so but yes that's one of the one of the biggest things is giving yourself the permission and just like watching what what unfolds right after that right right i i, I love what you said that you build a community for yourself so it's it's really up to you by being authentic you build your community that is so important because mm-hmm. how often are we out there and we're looking, okay, well, how can I build my following? Okay, well, this this person says you've got to do this, and so I'm going to do that. And then this this other person says I've got to do that, so I'm going to do that. And you finish by being this washed-down version of nothing, like you're unidentifiable. Mm-hmm. Instead of just saying, you know what, let me just show up as I am. And those who get it, get it. And those who don't, can kick rocks. You know what I mean? I mean that yes, that's what yes. it's about. <laughs> yes, you're you're so right. You're so cuz cuz no <laughs> oh my god. And this is another thing post AGT where you learn as the artist, you are the business. Like mm-hmm. it everything flows from you. Mm-hmm. Um like endorsements, you know, what endorsements you could what um brands you connect with as a person right um like it's it's everything comes from you and the more you and like i i I would say i've been on tiktok long enough to watch like or on social media long enough to watch people um resent their following or resent Mm. what they've built for themselves after years oh oh. it's a thing right it's a thing so you're feeling like they resent it because they built it on quicksand. They built it on something that wasn't really who, who they represent. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because, wow. I mean, because even in, I mean, I, I even find that in like build, even in voice teaching, right? It's like, mm-hmm. um, am I teaching, am I teaching voice because like I enjoy this? Um, or I'm trying mm-hmm. to correct so much of the narratives that I picked up from other environments. And it's like, mm. <laughs> you you never really take the time to establish what you want out of something and just trusting that. Right. Um, and so, but it's, it's, I just feel like that's another um, a thing that I, like, I, I've seen and I've encountered and I'm kind of like, all right, um, when you figure out who you are, I think you're, or at least be willing to figure out, mm-hmm. <laughs> figure out something, be willing to try. Yeah. Um, but, but yes. Um, so my question then is, how did you get into coaching? Because clearly with an artistry like yours, you could be satisfied with being an artist and making your living that way. What, what called you to coaching? So I was in graduate school and mm-hmm. um, a good friend of mine's, um, and at the time I was working AV, so um, audiovisual, I was audiovisual tech, and I was learning all things audio, and I was excited about it. Um, and But I was looking, you know, for something else. I was like, all right, this is good for me to develop these skills, but I, I want the skills to, like, help me in music and not necessarily to be an AV. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> AV tech. And so, um, but a good friend of mine had said, hey, you ever thought about teaching? Hmm. And I was like, oh, I was like teaching. And he, and he, he kind of phrased the question another way. He was like, you ever thought about, um, he like, do you not think your peers would be interested in knowing how you do what you do? Um, mm-hmm. and I was like, well, what am I doing? You know, like, what, what is this? And I was like, oh, I'm mm-hmm. learning how to express myself, um, mm. and in the, in the medium of singing. Right. And I was like, oh, now when you say it like that, because for me, voice teaching was something that like you walked into music school deciding you want to be a voice teacher. Right. And I was just kind of like, and you know, I had like being in school, you you, you have your voice science classes um, and you got all this information. Um, and so when when he said that to me, I kind of sat with it for a while. And mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try. I'm going to see if I can help somebody. Mm-hmm. And I got my first student 
um, which was a public speaking, someone who was look, who was doing a lot of public speaking, and and he was like describing issues with his voice, mm-hmm. and 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 so <laughs> I, I put together this like little small workout for him, mm-hmm. um, and after like working with him for a while, and, and he was like, oh wow, like this this like fifteen minute thing really helps me, and I'm like, yay, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's let's get another student, and you know, and so, um, and so that was about three and a half years ago, um, but that's how I wow. got into voice teaching, and um, and and it's I, I I'm so glad, um, I listened to him, and I'm so glad I did it because it's it's a it's a rewarding thing to do, and even with the singing, um, the like all the singing that I'm doing now, it's one of those things where I feel like it fills me up, it um fills the cup, it it doesn't take too much energy, and um. But yeah, yeah. You know, that's an interesting thing because me personally, you you were saying that people, you think people tend to go into school and, you know, because they want to become a coach. I actually never wanted to become a vocal coach. Never. In fact, I felt like going into school, I went um, to school for jazz initially. And, you know, you had you had your classical side and your jazz side, and then you had your teacher side and your performance side. So I was in the jazz performance side, and the classical side was like, you know, like the geeks with the, you know, pimples and whatever, the the not cool people. And obviously I was in the cool side, right? (laughs) And I had no intention. I had no intention at all of going into teaching. I mean, that was the furthest thing from my mind. And what happened was, what had happened was, um, (laughs) <laughs> I met a French bass player who was in the jazz program and um, he stayed for a year or two. And when he left, he kept in touch with me and said, hey, what are you doing at, at the moment? I said, well, this is my last year of college. So I'm graduating. And I'm like, I don't know. What are you going to do with a a music degree? It's kind of like toilet paper. You know, it's not, you know, it's only useful in that sense. But um, he's like, well, what if you came and taught in France? I was like, shut up and take my money. <laughs> I could not hang up the phone yes. fast enough and get on a plane, right? And then I realized, oh wow, I did too. I did so much stupid stuff by saying yes. Because first of all, I took a job doing something I had no clue what the heck I was doing in a country where I don't speak the language. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I somehow made it work 25 years later, 25 years and two children later and and running a studio. I know that taking your shot is is really important. It's really important because yes. you, you yes. rise to the occasion. You rise to the occasion. Yeah. There's always yes. something to learn there, you know. But I think your students have to be very, they have to, I hope they understand how lucky they are because you're just, you just seem so caring and nurturing. And, you know, I, I can just see somebody later in their life is like, oh, yeah, my teacher, Mrs. Boyd. You know, it just seems like you would oh, just be kind of like um, this this figure that's going to leave a mark on a lot of students, you know. And and mainly so because they, you practice what you preach. Mm. Thank thank you for saying that. And first of all, no, thank you for sharing about how you got to France and got into teaching. Because I wanted to ask that. <laughs> I wanted to ask. I was like, okay, so how did you get here? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. oh wow. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, so it was a crazy story. Well, and to just give it a little more context, context. So obviously when I got to France and A, I didn't speak the language, and B, I had no clue what I was doing. No clue about teaching. I I knew what good singing was. Or so I thought. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I knew a lot of elements, but I had no sense of what pedagogy was. I didn't even know what the word meant. I didn't know that word existed until many years later. And so what happened was I was confronted with the fact that I had students coming in singing better than me, and I was the teacher. I also was confronted with the fact that I didn't have a method to dispense whatever things I knew at that time. And I certainly didn't know enough at that time. But I had to figure out a method, you know, a way to teach the things that I did actually know. And my pride wouldn't let me just stay there. I'm like, you know, Monique, you're going to have to go back to school or you're going to have to quit this job. And I wasn't going back to the States. That's, that wasn't going to happen. Mm-mm. Not not I. We are not. We don't quit. That's not what we do. We don't throw in the towel. We yes, don't, we don't do that. So I enrolled in the conservatory and did studies 
And long story short, at the end of conservatory, I wind up needing to do things to re-educate my voice. And, and then I wind up getting into speech level singing. And this is where I began to learn about pedagogy for the first time in my life. So that was in, oh, it was like 2006, around that period, 2005, 2006 or seven, uh, that I began to learn pedagogy and, and a whole world opened up to me. And in my journey of learning to be a better teacher, I actually realized that I had a talent for teaching. So it was kind of weird because I never wanted to teach to begin with. And then I realized that I, w- I had a calling for <laughs> it. So it's kind of weird. <laughs> But that's 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 my story. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. What, what do you? So this is so. What would you say? Like, is there is there a big difference in studying um, music or in in overseas than there is in the states? Like, do you find like there to be a lot of difference? I think so. I think so. And uh, I think you you know you grew up in the church, right? So. Probably some of your yeah. first experiences with music is church music, right? That in itself is its own school. You know, church music is for Black Americans. That's our classical music. And it's the basis, you know, it's one of the three pillars of most American music, right? And the way we learn it is highly experiential. So we're encouraged to jump in. We're encouraged, you know, tell your story, baby. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do your thing, baby. You know, we're, <laughs> we're encouraged to get up. You know, we might be singing on a table. We're encouraged to clap on beats two and four and not one and three. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> we don't know why, but we're encouraged to do certain things. And we just do them because that's the culture that we in, that we're in, right? And I realized that this is how I realized how rich the culture that I grew up in was. When I started teaching gospel choir and I was um, faced with the fact that the people in France weren't used to singing as high as what we were used to singing in choirs. The, For example, the tenors, they're looking at me like, that's not where that is. I'm like, that's where it is. And that's most of what we sing will sit here. It sits rather high for everybody, for sopranos, altos, and to everybody's go, going up into the rafters, right? And then when I started to have to do, like, sometimes I would uh, do some sheet music. If I didn't, if, if some of the uh, charts were a little bit um, complicated and I couldn't just keep it all in my head, like some, some, of, some of Kirk Franklin's stuff was challenging that, you know, like, no, I need to write this down because it wasn't all parallel movements, you know? So when I started writing it down, I'm like, these rhythms are easier to learn by ear than by reading. Because if I had to have these people read these charts, we'd probably do one song every two months because they're really hard to read. And so I'm like, wow, it, it, it opened my brain up to different ways of learning. I learned different things at the conservatory. At the conservatory, you know, we were reading different types of harmonies and different types of music. But because I had a jazz background, when I came into classical singing, I was hearing the songs as chord changes. So I always knew what my um, harmonic relationship was, you know, my voice to the harmony. I always knew what it was because I always heard things in chord changes, right? But I was always very proud and, um, yeah, recognizing just how rich the gospel background was and how it led me to be the singer I am today. Like, no matter what I sing, underlining it is always something from gospel, always. Even if it's classical, there's always something from that. It just guides me, you know? Yeah. I love what you said about how you learned, like, it was more easy to to hear this rhythm than, mm-hmm. like, than reading it. Yeah. It's, which, it's just so interesting because, like, in I'm almost like it, in the whole teaching environment, it's like modeling um, mm-hmm. is is super powerful for students learning, especially younger yes. singers. Um, yeah. Being able to like model something for them and be like, "All right, you know, just repeat this after me," and and 
and even being able to, um, I would say, work with different singers or in different mm-hmm. music environments because you can you can also look at it, but you can also hear it and feel it. Yeah. Um, it. So I I love what you said about like <laughs> like with Kerr Franklin rhythm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like like it's just it's just more easier for me to say this for you. Yeah. I'll just, get you. I'll, yeah. Because after me, it's gonna take me too long to write it down. It's gonna take you way too long to read it. We ain't got time for that. I'm just gonna sing it, and you gonna pick up what you pick up. But the truth is, yeah. that is our culture, you know, the culture of lining things out. That's that's how it started. That oral and oral um, tradition is it, it, everything's in there. Because when you think about it, when we're in church and the choir director sings something, they'll sing the line. But within that line, there's so much information. There's obviously the notes that they're singing, the rhythms that they're singing, the intention. The phrasing and the inflections. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of information, but they're just going to sing yes. it and then let you pick out what you can. And they'll keep singing it until you get it right. And lo and behold, you know, we're able to pick out all that information simultaneously. Whereas on sheet music, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to have the pitches written. You're going to have the notes. You're going to have, you know, mezzo forte and then, you know, whatever else, you know, is going to be written on there. Mm-hmm. Um, but something will be missing. Something will be missing, mm-hmm. you know. And so mm-hmm. what I realized from, from you know, our background growing up in the church is how important our ears were, how much information we picked up without even knowing we were picking it up. Well, I was, I was, I was just going to um, piggyback off of that and be like, yes, because a, a lot of my, especially when I'm teaching them, like, like how do we improv how do we mm-hmm. take this like cover song or somewhere over the rainbow and make it cool mm-hmm. <laughs> and like i can you can have an, a, a singer be like oh my gosh you do this so easily and i'm like if only you know <laughs> like <laughs> like i can take my time to like notate this mm-hmm. but there's just been so much listening and so much like um, music happening around you when you're growing up in a in a church, yeah. Like, um, especially like the, the one we grew up in, where it's like you you have material for days, and mm-hmm. and it's 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 like it's 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 part of your nature. It's, it feels innate, very yes. organic to you, yeah. And so, oh, Look, yeah, it's mm-hmm. interesting because I think that um, a lot of people don't spend time on ad living. Like, uh, when I introduce that to my students, they're like, huh? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, when you hear Aretha, you hear Whitney, you hear Luther ad-libbing, that's a natural extension to what they've been doing. And so they do it so effortlessly, you're thinking that there's something, like, really otherworldly. And to be fair, those artists I named, they are otherworldly. But it's certainly mm-hmm. along the lines of the fact that those are skills that they've built. They've just done it so much, you know, they, they've they spent a lot of time on it. And so a lot of singers, they'll come into it and they're like, well, why am I not good at ad-libbing? I'm like, well, when's the last time you ad-libbed? Never. Well, there you go. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's simple. Yeah. You yeah. actually have to spend time ad-libbing. And all ad-libbing, to me, I say that ad-libbing is prolonging the storyline it's taking the story long further than what was written you know so uh, mm-hmm. i and i you can always use an aretha franklin as an example because she's one of the greatest ad libbers ever you know once she said her you know her verse her chorus then she's going to tell you how she feels about the situation and that's where it comes in and it's, and i say you know that's where you're injecting your personality into the song because you have the song but now you've got what do you feel about the song what do you feel about what just went yeah. down you know and that yes. can only be said by you in your way you know mhm mhm yes and yeah. it it's oh my goodness when, when you talk about like um cuz oof cuz i i can think about being in church and like our ad libs was always based on the lyrical content and and mm-hmm. like so like it's, you don't even think about it, but it teaches you no. how to develop like some kind of subtext, yes, or some some kind of perspective about it. Like I remember, yep. <laughs> like gospel songs talking about you know a bird on a tree, you know, and, and like mm-hmm. and like just the most <laughs> things you would think would be the most silliest thing. 
<laughs> right, right. But it was impactful. You know, yeah. it, it was extremely impactful. <laughs> and even when I think about, um, oh my gosh, um, even uh, like jazz songs, is it um, the sky long? Is there anything you wish mm, oh, to say to One me? of my favorite like, ballads. You know, there's a person talking to a bird, literally, mm-hmm. or like this. It, it's I can't, oh my god, I get so excited talking about this. But like the thinking about uh, Aretha Franklin and Whitney Houston and and all these singers, who I think um, they make it look so magical, so easy, and yeah. I think that's the 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 challenging things for from people who may not have like had that kind of like upbringing where um mm-hmm. they had to do ad lib like on the fly you know like yeah. sometimes in church you know your experience is we just need another 2 minutes to pass the yeah. plate around <laughs> yeah. or, or like something happening <laughs> like we just we just work. we just need we need to stall a little bit yeah they're like <laughs> keep going keep going keep going <laughs> keep keep going, <laughs> yeah, right. And but like th- they make it look so magical, but mm-hmm. really it's years and years of listening. Yeah. Um. And because even when I think about them, I I, I think about oh this would be because like when I'm singing Aretha songs, I'm like oh my gosh, this would be this would definitely be a, some a way Aretha would phrase something, right? Or the way she would sing it back. Or I'm thinking about Whitney Houston. Like, you listen to her so much. It's like, oh, this is... She would definitely do something in this room. In this room. And... Mm-hmm. But they look at so... They make it look so magical. But it's really a high skill, in my opinion. It is a high skill. And it's it's one that I think singers need to dedicate a part of their practice time to developing. Like, I would say, personally, I think at least 10 to 15 minutes and each practice session should be dedicated to ad-libbing where you'll take a section of the music and put it on loop and you do something I call breaking through the wall. The wall is that thing that you hit when you're like, you're listening to yourself and you're like, oh, this stinks, this sucks, I sound like crap, and 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 and, and, and. but you keep singing anyway and you break through the wall because at some point one magical phrase pops out and you're like, oh, you know, and... And, and that's where you get your gems. You know, you can go back and say, well, I, you know, I got that one phrase. And if I did it once, I can do it again. If you keep going through it and sort of get out of your own way, because that's why you have to keep mm. repeating it. Because in the beginning, you're just thinking. You're just thinking way too much rather than feeling, rather than going through your telling your story, as you say. Right, right, right. You know. Oh, yes. Um, oh, wow. I love oh, that. I, I have to keep that with me, breaking through the wall. Yeah, because it really, it feels like a wall. It feels like this, you know, you're hitting yourself against this wall and it's like, ah, but if you keep hitting a wall, eventually you're going to break through that wall. And what happens is Mm -hmm. either the student, you know, gets discouraged by the wall and so they never get to the other side or they break through it. There's only, there's only two, two exits here, (laughs) you know, so you actually have to do it long enough so that you break through the wall. And um, there's different ways to do it because, you know, you'll notice that some singers are more rhythmical. Some ser- singers, uh, it's going to be the lyrical content or some singers are more melodic, you know? So it's it's usually like you've kind of got to find the one that's most easily accessible to you and run with that one mm-hmm. and then, and, and break through the wall that way. And then once you've gotten that, then you'll maybe look at the other two, you know? That's kind of how I look at it. Mm, mm, mm. So I love that. Tell I love me, that. I I want to go back because I, I I'm also on this show. I'm about celebrating people and celebrating what they've done. So, what has life been post AGT? Oh, that's a good question. Such a good question. You know, it's been it's been fun. It's been like sh- good scratching. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of singing. Mm-hmm. Um, like I'm proud to say like like my my whole year is pretty much written like it's scheduled booked yes me. yes so, yes so that i'm I'm very happy um okay. i i my biggest fear like post a g t was like would would this would this be such a an experience where I have nothing to else to look to oh, okay. um and like would like what would happen next and mm-hmm. And I would say this, like, 
on the show, I get I got to meet a lot of people who had teams and they had like strategic plans mm -hmm. about why they were there, mm -hmm. and which is very important. <laughs> it's very important to have yeah. <laughs> have that. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh wow, like I'm a little behind here, but mm -hmm. <laughs> but I can catch up. I can catch up. But it's been great. Um, I've been able to expand my studio a little bit more mm -hmm. um but majority of my students are overseas and this mm -hmm. that has been super exciting yeah because like you got a, someone who grew up in a small town i get to meet people like across the world through like video right. and it's it's uh that was super awesome um i got the chance to like to like i would say like the so, like, outside of the, the singing and the private events um, and, you know, having a higher ticket price, which is chef's kiss amazing. Um, but it's, life has been, like, great stretching. Um, it's been very hopeful, very joyful. Mm -hmm. um, and, like just, like, just earlier this week, um, like when I'm put, putting together my set list mm -hmm. and um, like thinking about like, hey, you know, what do I want to share with people when I when I'm at this place or when at when I'm, when I'm at that that place, um, and being able to like hire my friends that mm -hmm. I oh. love, that 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 has been awesome. Okay. <laughs> it's like in, in music school, you meet so many people that you connect with, mm -hmm. um, and and that has that is awesome and. And so it's made me even more of a dreamer. Mm. Um definitely more of a dreamer. It's um like I've went back to um arranging, playing around on like Sibelius, <laughs> like going okay. like all the things that you you pick up in music school. And it's just kinda like, yeah. okay, whatever. Yeah. Um but like I've gotten a chance to go back to that. Um and <sighs> Monique, I've just been doing a lot of playing, a lot of playing that that I'm really happy about, <laughs> happy yeah. about. And um, and I would say, like, reading people's responses, like um, their messages, like, I love music. I love singing. It was, it's just one of those things that I know I was going to be doing for the rest of my life, regardless if I'm famous for it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, this is just, this is just it. Yeah. Um. um and but but just knowing that like that's even more of a possibility um to mm -hmm. for it to be far more than what i imagined before um right. that has been amazing and so <laughs> life is busy you know there's a lot of like <laughs> retainer fees there's a lot of yeah. like <laughs> contracting and yeah. uh, making sure i'm not getting myself in situations that i'm going to be uncomfortable with for the next 5 10 years you yeah. know like so handle a lot your of business that too. right but overall yeah it's it's commerce, like, oh my goodness, um, it it definitely is, um, and and I I was you even mentioning like it being business, like even learning that what makes up the music business is a lot of other businesses, like you mm -hmm. have the touring aspect of it, mm -hmm. um, you have like the licensing and mm -hmm. syncing aspect of it, um, mm -hmm. and so it's it's you're you're thrown into a whole world in merchandise, yes, yes, yes. And um, it or like um, learning that there's no code of ethics here. There's no HR department for a lot of what we do. <laughs> you can't complain <laughs> to nobody. <laughs> you can't complain. <laughs> you can't no. it's like take this up with my take this up with my hand. <laughs> you don't like it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it, there, and so it's, but um, and I mean, but yeah, there's there's no HR department here, so um, de definitely, <laughs> definitely do your research. <laughs> yeah, draw your boundaries, stick to them, um, know what you can and you can't do, and be okay with that. You know, um, one final thought I would say, like post AGT, is like meeting so like getting. Understanding like what it means to be a content creator online, what it means mm -hmm. to like, and separating that from being like a, a well, should I separate that from being a musician or being an artist, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. or how does content help you be that? And so, that has been something super fascinating um, um, 
post AGT as well. But life is good. It's good. <laughs> well, 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 wait. Say all that to say it's been good. <laughs> well, let, let's let's just dig into that a little bit deeper. <laughs> what has been your conclusion? Do, do you separate uh, your artistry, your music making, from how you do content online? No. Mm. No, it's. <sighs> And I think the content that's doing really well, at least for the musicians, mm-hmm. where the content is art. Mm-hmm. It yeah. is the art. Yeah. And because, oh my goodness, because we're pulling away from music videos. Like there's no, like right now everybody's investing. The video format is like podcasts. It's um, it's like the 15 second clip of the bridge, you know. Um, And so like nobody's thinking right. about investing all that money in like a, a full video there it's like mm. several cuts of it um right your community want to see want to be with you in the process of it all so yeah even down to i got this little melody or and so oh, wow. it's it's i think the content is the art part of the art now right. um and i think those who catch on to that are doing really really well okay so how do you feel about you know Short form, short, uh, sorry, short form versus long form content. Because you are a singer, so you're used to long form. It has its ups and downs. Um, okay. I think so far it's like singing. Um, it's like give me your best 15 seconds. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or like we're doing so much production for 15 seconds. Um, and mm-hmm. like I, I, I would say for me, because there's been like... Um, a studying background, you know, like in undergrad, we practice 15, 20 hours a week. So mm-hmm. we we know like what the voice can do <laughs> or you, you're you yeah. able to you know, pace yourself. Yeah. Um, but I feel like with some people, if, if it's, if they don't have that kind of training or discipline mm-hmm. and they're just performing for the 15 seconds, mm-hmm. um, that can be real tough on you. Because like when it's time to perform live, yeah. it's like, boy, <laughs> this is not the same. Like you don't. Re- yeah, it's not the same thing. You're like, yeah, I could box in the ring for 15 minutes. Can I go 15 rounds? I don't know about all that. <laughs> that's that. Taking one hit versus taking 15 is not the same. It's not the same. My question would be then as a teacher, because you have to see this coming into the studio, how do you deal with students' perception of what singing is? Because for a lot of younger singers, their perception of singing is 15-minute sound bites. And so they want to be prepared for a 15-minute sound bite, but it's like great teachers are preparing their their um their singers for, you know, 15, 20, 30, an hour and a half, you know? So how do you deal with that? demystifying everything mm-hmm. right it's it's and oh my goodness exposing them to like that 15 seconds is highly produced like for example i can take um that 15 seconds is highly produced and this person has ran that video through color grading you know you they mm-hmm. they've there's like auto pitch correction and all that on that 15 mm-hmm. seconds <laughs> right? Right, right, right and in some in some of my students i like to bring my mic into the room um and set it up for them like let's sing through a mic so you can just hear like yeah. what we can do in an hour lesson um so mm-hmm. far as editing wise mm-hmm. um Ooh, but like then that. also too like it's especially teaching contemporary vo- voice yeah because like all these little inflections mm-hmm. that um that you like you, like you hear it more when it's being picked up by a condenser mic. Sure, you know it's like, oh, that's why that breathy onset sound really good right there. Yeah, because try um, to do that in real it, life. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> he's not like a dragon. <laughs> you, 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 was, that, <laughs> was, was that cute? No. Listen, <laughs> not not really. No, no, <laughs> not at all. No, not at oh all. My gosh. <laughs> yeah. not, not today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and man, it's it's okay. So let me let me let me ask you your question before I go on and on. But um, so preparing them for it's like for okay, I there are two things that I encounter. I have the one person that thinks like all vocal aha moments happen in fifteen seconds. <laughs> um, you have that <laughs> that situation happening. 
where, oh, I saw this person do this one exercise and then now all of a sudden they were able to like belt that high note. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, (laughs) oh, baby, no, 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 baby, no, 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 (laughs) no, no. Like what, what you don't see is that student is probably you know, isolating registers, you know, this person is probably like, um, like they already have a teacher that's like walking them through how to practice. Um, they Mm -hmm. already have a teacher that's walking them through like, Hey, like, how do we transition through this, this first, you know, this first break or whatever in the voice. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so, um, that they, (laughs) that you don't have, um, there's context and, there's a lot of context there. And mm-hmm. so you have that person that comes in and then you have the other student that comes in where it's like, I think they don't realize like a lot of musicians play three hour gigs or like they know a lot of songs. They plan their sets. Um, they lower keys because they're touring. Um, they like just all the things that you need to know to do your job well, they have no mm-hmm. idea that's happening yeah. because they just think like the 15 seconds, I'm just going to jack the key of this song up so I can just be at the tip of my range, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you, have, do you now have a team helping you? Because you said that when you got to America's Got Talent, everybody else was there. They had a team, they had plans and stuff like, have you now surrounded yourself with a team that guides you and, and does things for you? I I do have a really good lawyer. <laughs> and that's for right now that I have okay. a good lawyer uh that helps me navigate the 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 things. So far as like um like there has been opportunities and um there are some relationships being built being built. Um mm-hmm. but, um I, I'm looking into a booking agent and just making sure are, are those the right things for me. I, I will say before I started doing voice teaching, I had a lot of experience in sales. Um, and a lot of experience, mm-hmm. okay. A lot of experience that really aids me in navigating this well. Um, and, and because there's a lot of moving parts in, in what we do, mm-hmm. um, just being very careful of like, who do you bring into, who, who who do you bring into your circle? Old. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Like I, I'm Lashini is very aware that she's the new girl here, and so, <laughs> but um, but I do have a really good lawyer, and that makes all the difference in the, in in a lot of things that I'm involved in right now. Nice, nice. And this is important to talk about because singers um, that come in and they want to be these great singers, they only see the singer. And they don't realize that the people that go anywhere have a team, a whole team, a whole people, you know, on that team. They've got a glam squad. They've got a producer. They've got a music director. They've got, as you say, an entertainment lawyer. They have a personal assistant. They have someone who's taking care of their branding. Like, there's teams of people that help with the final product that we see. Not one person doing, and and I think the problem is because they only see that person, they're tempted to try to do it alone, mm-hmm. and you can't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You you can't. I mean, even before becoming famous, you have to have a team of people. You you're gonna have people that are helping you with your vocal technique. You're gonna have people that are helping you with your stage presence. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm someone else that might help you work on a particular style. I mean, there's just teams of people. Stop trying to do this alone. This is a team sport. You don't make music by yourself. I mean, you make make some things by yourself, but eventually mm-hmm. you're going to have to bring some other people in if only to help you edit. Yes. Cuz you're you've got blind spots. You can't see everything and you don't know everything. Mhm. Mhm. You know. Oh yes. I, I that's the thing I'm seeing that's a, a big problem for people who are especially the ones that are talented. They're tempted to do everything by themselves and the end product is it's it's not as good as it could be because they needed someone else to come in and say, "You know what? What you're doing good here is this is this, but this part here needs someone else's expertise to come in and finesse this a little bit." You know. Yes. Yes. It so true. But I'm because, glad that you're assembling your team. Yes. Yes. Because it this gets harder. 
especially as the opportunities come, the bigger the opportunities come. Um, um, and like, for mm-hmm. me, you never really know, like, um, there's one thing I'm doing um, where I'm not even singing. It's, it's I'm on a panelist and so it's, and I'm, um, talking about art and all these other things like that. There's just, you never really know, you know, why people are are seeking you out. Um, and so mm-hmm. there is, and like even talking about show business and a- appearing on TV, um, there are so many things that happen before you even get to that stage. Um, mm-hmm. And my goodness, I mean, even for a singer and, and the recording process, you know, having a producer um, and I would say even knowing how to build relationships um, is, is, is something like, so what we do is highly relational. It's highly relational. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. And so like, what's, what's, do you value like certain personalities? Um Mm-hmm. Um, communication um do you know what you need right now <laughs> you know like right, all, all right. these other things that we don't we don't we don't ever think about and I knew I I, I wasn't thinking about those things a lot as well because I just thought every singing context was like my dad's church um and right oh <laughs> it's not mm-hmm. it's it's fun but it's not <laughs> but it's not it's not it's not it's, yeah. it's a lot more that's required out of you but yeah yeah, you can't do this by yourself. Um and 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 like you said, you do cheap in the final product. Um you're not able to deliver well because you're just trying to do it all by yourself. Um and and the the art, yeah, the yeah. the work suffering. And you'll exhaust yourself in the process. Mhm. So, um we're we're kind of coming up to the time that I can steal from you cuz I know you are so busy. What's coming up next for you that you can talk about? Well, there will be so okay i I'll, I'll say this um i am making my first like academic debut which i'm i'm really excited about it okay um so um oh yes yes <laughs> so like um i i have my like my first experience of like teaching a, a master class um and for a week you know working mm-hmm. with university students and um nice. and it's all from um the I guess you would would call my specialty um, or what, what do they, or what, what can I, um, Mm -hmm. or or what do I do that people pay me for? People pay me to do these things. (laughs) And so um, that I can't talk about um, that is happening that I'm very excited about. There are some other things that are happening that are really, really cool that I can't talk about. Um, But, um, but yes, (laughs) but that, that's, that's, that's something I'm super excited about that's happening for me. That is exciting. And you realize that it's happening for you because you made it happen. You know, you, you, you kind of, it's like a beacon of light that you put out there. And then people who resonate with that answer the call, you know, mm-hmm. and because your call is authentic, your signal is stronger, mm-hmm. you know? And I, I just, I love what you're doing. I love your story. I lo- I mean, Honestly, we could sit here and talk for another two hours, but we got bills to pay. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> but, but I really, I, I want to thank you for, for taking a chance on me, not knowing me personally. I appreciate, you know, this is, I'm only in my, I just finished my 19th episode. So, you know, my show is a baby show still. But, um, Ooh. yeah, it's a little baby show, but I ain't going to work because I love to talk, honey. I love to talk. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good at it. <laughs> so, yes, yes. I was, I was just about well, to say, I'm like, and you're good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, tell me, Ken, in in the notes, in the show notes, um, is there a place that we can find out your master? Or will you have any master classes, for example, that are online or open to the public that they'd be able to sign up for? Not yet, maybe, or or a mailing Not- list or something like that. I do have a mailing list, um, and I can put that in yeah. uh, put that in the show notes for you guys to keep up with me. Okay, okay, that's fabulous because we're definitely going to want to keep up with you. I mean, I met you through through Instagram, but I know you're going to be all over the place because the world needs this light that you bring so effortlessly and so naturally. I appreciate you, and I wish you all the best, Lashane. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. Well, there you have it, the fabulous Miss Lashanae Boyd. And I just want to wrap this up with a few key takeaways from today's episode. 
Remember that music is a team sport. You need to surround yourself with a team of experts who cover your blind spots so that the final product, and it is a product, the final project is actually excellent. It's not just as good as your best can be, but it's as good as the best of a team of experts can be. Also, do not confuse the difference between the skills required to sing a 15-second sound bite that's often highly edited and produced and to sing a whole concert. They're not the same skills. Singing a whole concert requires years and years of practice and study. Speaking of study, if you want to know how to practice, I'll drop the information in the show notes on my practice guide because I have a guide to help you make sure you're getting the most out of your practice. Next, I want you to give yourself permission to do the things that your soul is calling you to do. You know that nagging, aching feeling that says, oh, I really want to do this. Stop being the mean parent and let yourself do those things. Lastly, don't forget that in this business, so much of what you're able to do is based on the relationships that you build. Make sure that when you meet people, you build genuine relationships. Don't just try to work with people and see what you can get for them, but actually see what kinds of collaborations you might be able to have. You might find your musical soulmate or the person that just understands you the best, but make it so that you make these long-lasting relationships. All right, well, there you have it. Thank you for listening to this episode. Don't forget to check the show notes to get in touch with Lashane Boyd if you want to take lessons or sign up for her newsletter. And if you haven't done so already, sign up for mine because there's nothing better than getting information from people who have done what you are trying to do. Musically, Monique.